Hi, this is Gail with Bernina of Naperville, and I am so excited to show you today's tutorial because I took a very easy um, little border print from Lewis and Irene that I embroidered, Welcome Winter, and used it to show you how to do edge to edge quilting in your embroidery machine edge to edge quilting in your embroidery machine. It's been our most requested tutorial. So I'm finally really excited to be able to present it to you and I hope you learned something. So let's have a look at it. So here's a little collection of all the things that you're gonna need for your edge to edge quilting. You can see here, I made a pretty small one. This is a fat quarter size, but you're gonna need the OESD template sheets, machine, quilting needles. I used a size 90. I'm using my hoop key do and screw key do and a Bernina 700 embroidery only machine, which means that I'm going to be using the black bobbin case rather than the yellow high tension bobbin case that the machine comes with. I'm using the Mettler 50 weight silk finish thread and I'm winding this on the bobbin as well. Um, what I haven't shown you in the video, but it's a given, is that you're going to take your three layers of backing, batting, and the top fabric and use the KK2000 basting spray, and then your hoop. So I have designed this for this application to be the midi hoop and the mega hoop, and you'll also need your center placement templates for this. Now, the final thing that we're gonna to wanna to look at is the embroidery design. So OESD just came out with a brand new collection called Classic Panograph Quilting, and I picked a design from that collection. Um, there's a lot of ones to choose from, and they're really nice because um, there's some with leaves, there's some with loop-de-loop, -loop, so there's something that you might be able to use for every occasion. Another thing that's really nice that I really seek out are the continuous line designs that are single run. So all of the designs in this package are gonna give you single run versions and triple stitch versions. The triple stitch versions are gonna allow you to see a lot more thread when it's stitched out and the single run versions are gonna look more like a standard quilting design. Also, the single run options work really well if you wanted to use these designs for couching in the embroidery machine. So let's hop on over to the computer where we can have a look at how I prepped the templates. So I'm starting with the design number three from the classic Panagraph, and I'm also working in a version nine software in case this looks a little different than what you might be used to when you see software tutorials. So um, easy peasy, I'm not altering this design at all. I'm gonna keep it the exact size that it was digitized in. I'm also making sure that I picked the single run design, which I did. But one of the things that I like to do with this when I'm doing a continuous line design is I like to actually go up to the design tab and go to auto start and end and I want it to start at the first stitch of the design, and I want it to end at the last stitch of the design. And then I say, okay. Then I'm gonna go over to the hoop, and I'm gonna right click on the hoop, and I'm going to say I want it to automatic center, but not at the start needle position. So I'm gonna uncheck that box, and then say okay. And now if I wanna go ahead and see this, to the hoop, you can see how it's gonna fit in the hoop. Finally, what I also like to do is print the template. And I have loaded the OESD uh, repositionable adhesive template sheets in my printer, and I'm just gonna go ahead and print. And you can decide what you actually want to print when you open up your print preview and then you have different options. So if you go under options, you can decide if you want the worksheet, if you want the hooping sequence, if you want the stitches and the connections and all of those things done. And then you just simply want to print. So what I do is I load up only one sheet of my template stuff at one time so that one sheet prints my template, which you can see here, but then the next page is my design information. So then that prints on a regular piece of paper. And so then when I'm done 
with all of that, I can go ahead and just click my Print Now button. At this point, you also wanna to remember to save this design. We wanna save this design in a folder somewhere where we can remember it because we wanna save the um, centering choices that we made for the design. Now, another thing that I wanna do is switch my hoop. So I'm actually going to um, right click on the hoop again, and this time I'm gonna pick the mega hoop. Also making sure that it says for the number 26 foot and that that at start needle position isn't selected. And now I'm gonna carefully make a copy. And I make a copy in this case by selecting my design with a left click and then I'm gonna right click and hold and that makes a little copy. So now I can just scoot this little guy up into position so that I can line my little dots up together and so now I might need to click on it and use my arrows on my keyboard to kind of line that up just where I want it. But yeah, I like it. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with this one. But this time I'm going to save this as 12887-03. And then I'm just going to write mega next to it. and always put it in a folder where you're gonna remember where you saved it. And now I'm ready to print this one out. And this time I'm gonna load up two sheets of that template paper because we're gonna to have to stick these two together because this design is larger than our printer paper. Finally, what I wanna do is get rid of the hoop by just clicking it so it doesn't show up and I wanna zoom out a little bit. I think I'm gonna to go to like 15% here in my preview window. And then I'm gonna make a copy again and line it up just so. Once again, when I have to tweak it, I like to use my little placement arrows like that. And now I'm gonna do a Control A and this time, all I'm doing is I want to make a whole piece of how I want these to be lined up next to each other, just so I can see how I like it. So one thing you could do is you could do a control G on your keyboard, which is going to group this together. And that just makes it easier when we go to move it around. And so now I'm going to move that into place. and get it, you know, where I where you want it to go. And then just keep making a little quick copy and moving it into position. A quick copy and moving it into position and a quick copy and moving it into position. And now that is, I know because I've already tested this, so that size is gonna allow me to preview that on my work, on my quilt that I picked out. So once again, if you go to the print preview, this is gonna actually print out on several pages. If we just go to next page, you can see there's a lot of different pages that you could tape together to get the full effect. And I like to do this, obviously I wouldn't necessarily do this if I'm working on a super huge quilt, but it does really help me get an idea of how far apart they should be spaced. So now the final thing that we need to do after we print this, and then you're gonna tape a few pages together. I, I only taped enough for two rows together and you'll see that in the, in the rest of the tutorial. But what I'm gonna do is just undo until I get back to my little two designs there. And then I can show my hoop again. And now I'm gonna send this to my USB stick. And then I'm also gonna open my other design, which was the plain one here that we really didn't do anything to. 
and then I'm gonna save that on my stick as well. And now we're gonna bring those over to our USB stick by using our right to the USB stick, and then we're ready to stitch it out. So once you have arranged and printed out your templates, I'm actually on this project making two. I'm gonna use my mega hoop and my midi hoop. So here is my single design here that I have for the design. And then this is two designs loaded together. So what I did is I wanted to lay these out on my, on my quilt sandwich here. And then um, what, I, what I wanna do is kind of just see how this whole area covers. Now, we can go over to our software and we can lay out all of our rows to see how we like all of the rows looking together, like you can see there on my computer screen. And then once you have that into, good, into a good arrangement, you can actually print that off, tape your pages together, and then kind of have a visual for what you want it to look like on your project. Now, I did not print all of the pages together. I just taped a couple rows of that screenshot that you saw on my computer together. And it comes out looking something like that. Now, this is um, one, two, three, like almost four rows of this um, but yeah you can get the idea of how this is going to cover the quilt so we're not really going to work with this this is literally just a visual like i told you we're going to work with these so this is the printable template paper and this is a little bit helpful this is re restickable so what i'm going to do is go ahead and print peel off my paper just like that and I'm gonna lay this down. Now, you can also see that I have made lines. There's one, two, three, four, five lines. And so we're gonna stitch this design five times and once. So we're gonna have one mega hoop and one midi hoop five times or 10 hoopings. All right, so in order to check how far apart you need to draw your lines, you're gonna First, put your piece into place here, and then you're gonna wanna measure how far apart you want your rows. And so I'm just gonna line mine up here. I already took my design and drew a little blue line down this way so that I know where to add my starting point here because this is an offset. This is gonna go straight across like so. And then I'm gonna just line this up and see what's happening. So I'm gonna take my ruler and then I'm gonna measure from this center point to this center point. And that is about four and three eighths of an inch. So now I'm gonna line that up just like that, peel this back and mark each one of my rows four and three eighths of an inch. So now that I basted with just a long stitch around the corner here, just to kind of keep everything flat and everything, I need to hoop this up. And so I'm gonna do that first by taking the first piece that I actually wanna hoop, which is back to my, my template here. And I'm gonna line that up right on the line, just like this. Okay. So now I'm going to get my mega hoop and squeeze this into position. And when I do something like this, like this edge to edge stuff, you're gonna, you're probably gonna laugh at me a little bit, but I use my very favorite painter's tape and I put the top of my hoop, which is here, and I do a little bit of tape right on the inside there on the sides, top, and bottom. And this is gonna prevent my hoop from wiggling around on me. Okay, so I'm gonna slip my hoop bottom under here, take this. I also am gonna put in my placement template. And you also wanna look, since my belly is this direction, I wanna use my arrows to point to my belly 
and I'm using my placement template. So my placement template, the middle lines here on my placement template are the dark purple lines here on this template. So now I'm gonna line those up like this and we can feel that stick right into place. That's not going anywhere, that's gonna hold for us. And now I'm just simply going to hope that I have positioned this just enough. Now, one of the things that you might wanna put in this hoop are the little springs that will help keep the hoop open. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now because we're gonna to need to be doing lots of hooping and unhooping. So they say hoop springs eternal, right? Oh God, boomy, boomy right now. <laughs> All right, so these are our little hoop springs that we're gonna use. And um, they come in a set of five. And I'm just, and we need two for the mega hoop. There they are. So then we're gonna take our screw out all the way. Don't let the nut fall on the floor and roll away and you never see it again. Okay, there we go. Now we're gonna put this guy in, just one of them. Then we're gonna put that back in. The screw stayed in, this little hexy, or this nut stayed in there while we try to Screw it back into position there. So now that will help keep the hoop springy. So we just need to do that to the other side. All right, so we've got two pieces. Now I still need to adjust it a little bit, but let's, let's see how this works. And now I've taped this so I should be able to just slip slide this into position. Get our hoop under there. Oh my, I can feel it happening in an amazing way. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. It's in there. Your hoop key do. Let's do it. So we're gonna put that guy in there to tighten this corner. And now we're here on this corner. So I'm working on the Bernina 700 embroidery only machine today, and it ships with the yellow high tension bobbin case in it, but I am using my black bobbin case. So if you have a 700, you might consider picking up a regular black bobbin case if you wanna do a lot of in the hoop projects, things like uh, little bags that are made in the hoop or quilting projects like this one. So I've wound a bobbin of the thread that we're going to be using and I'm going to load that in here. Now this is also this is also a quilting project which means that I want to change to a quilting needle. So I'm using my little screw key do and I changed this to a I used a 90 quilting needle. We'll see how this looks. Um, you might be able to go smaller to like a 75. Then you want to make sure that the bobbin case is in there close the door and now let's pick our design. So our design is loaded on our memory stick and we're going to use the longer one first. Before we get started we just want to do a little check. So I'm hitting the I button and hitting the check mark and now it wants me to just press that green button. So pressing that green button just kind of wiggles everything into place. You cannot put the hoop on and then press that green button. It just literally wants you to have nothing on there and press that button. Now it wants us to put the hoop on. Okay, now once the hoop is on, you wanna make sure there's nothing down there under that hoop in your way. You just want to free all of the extra fabric and things like that. Now, when I loaded this up in the hoop, I actually took my design, and this is actually down here on mine. So all I'm going to do is go back to my rotate button, and I want to rotate it 180 degrees. Now I can go back to my check tool and I can hit my crosshairs and that's gonna take my needle 
right in the middle of my hoop because I did such a good job it's almost there so I need to move my needle just a little bit I'm going to lower my presser foot and I'm going to use my knobs to move that right into position right on that purple crosshair there so now that I have that done I can go ahead and close out of that screen and hit my sewing button and now I'm going to take my placement template plastic off and I'm going to peel my template off and see I had the wherewithal to mark it with top so I knew which way I was designing it. So another thing that you want to pay attention to is the tension. So the default setting on the 700 for tension and embroidery is three. But when I'm doing quilting in the hoop, I tend to go up to about 3.75 or maybe even four, it depends. So I'm just going to do a little pass and see how 3.75 works out for me. Now I have everything centered and I'm ready to start stitching. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up my thread. I only do this because I'm quilting. So I'm gonna put my needle down and that's gonna help me bring my thread up back here, just like that. <laughs> it's easier to grab the thread with my glasses on, just so you know. All right, so now we're gonna, we're gonna stitch. Once you have one piece done, it's time to grab the midi hoop and then we're going to hoop the last piece in this row or the this like little piece here and we're going to do that piece. I just wanted to take a moment to show you how gorgeous this looks on the back. Now you can see here that I picked that 90 needle because I'm going through some embroidery um, motif there. But maybe if you were just doing some regular quilting cotton, you wouldn't necessarily have to go for the size 90. Okay, so you're gonna take your hoop and add your double-sided tape on all four sides, just like you did on the mega hoop. And just kind of squish it down there like that. And now we're going to take all the hoops have the little arrow in the bottom like that. So we're going to line that up here and then make sure we can see the Bernina on our placement template. And then I'm going to line this up after I put this piece into position. And I already have a little X marks the spot. Just here. Like so. And also I'm making sure that my line lines up with that blue line. So now that's into position. And now I'm going to line this up right on those dark lines like that. And now we're ready to put this into our hoop. Now, no, um, no springs necessary for the ratchet hoops. All right, we're ready to stitch this one now. All right, so now what we're gonna do is um, I've, gone ahead and let me just show you i picked the single design which is this one right here and now we're going to go to our check tool <laughs> it bumped the camera oops 
and then go to our center position. And now we're gonna use our multi-function knobs to turn our little foot or turn our needle right into where we need it to go on that center marking spot. And now I'm gonna take my placement template out and the sticky template. And now I'm ready to stitch. So I'm gonna press the X mark, X button and our start to sew. And then I'm gonna go over here and make sure that everything is nice. Now, do you see how I'm using my embroidery foot here, the number 26, and I've got all this flopsy wopsy in the way? Well, one of the ways that this might be a little bit easier to manage is if I use some Aqua Mesh Plus. Aqua Mesh Plus is actually a sticky back water soluble product and all i have to do is just put it a little bit here to keep everything flat so the aqua mesh plus is going to allow us to peel and stick so i'm opening a new piece of it now i'm just using the small roll but you know you can use this the same way you use stable stick so you can hoop just the stable or just the aqua mesh plus in the hoop stick your fabric into place if you you know don't want to re hoop it or whatever but it, it has many purposes and you know some of us invent purposes for some of these things so i cut this weird little piece out that's sticky back make sure my tape doesn't get or my thread doesn't get under there and now I'm just gonna tape that down just like that so nothing gets in the way and then I'm gonna press my needle down button to pull up my thread now I'm just gonna start and it's sewing off the edge of this just a little bit And then you wanna be careful that it get, doesn't get stuck. So I'm just smoothing my finger there just a little bit. Now, normally I wouldn't like doing this technique. I would actually just use my wide echo quilting foot or something like that, but I needed to use the maximum space of my hoop and I can't do that if I use those larger based feet. Now, let's have a little conversation about perfection. All right, do you see that little spot that just doesn't quite line up? But all in all, if you cross your eyes and try to look at it four feet away on a galloping horse, it looks perfect. Well, this is kind of what happens when you don't necessarily use virtual positioning or pinpoint placement. So in an ideal world to fix this, this is where we start wanting the machines that have pinpoint placement or even virtual positioning. So I'm gonna go ahead and do another row and just stitch that out with the magic of television for you, right? And then I'm gonna show you how you're gonna line your next piece up using virtual positioning. And we'll get a little bit closer with our little dots there when we do that. Okay, so I used my template again right here and I've got the top lined up. I've got my little starting point lined up right here where my blue mark is. And then I'm just kind of seeing how everything plays well together like this and it's gonna look really good. So all I need to do is just hoop this again and bring it back to my embroidery machine and stitch it out. So I'll meet you back here when it's time to line up this guy. All right, it's looking pretty good so far. We're to this magic spot right here. And so I'm gonna put on our template and add maybe a little bit more of the um, Aqua Mesh Plus to the end here. And then I'm gonna show you how to use virtual positioning. 
Okay, so I have everything lined up the way I like it. I'm gonna squeeze this in the hoop. Okay, so we're ready to start with our midi hoop now and what we're gonna do, our virtual positioning. So I'm gonna hit this to be finished. And now it wants me to put the hoop back on, but I also want this to be a little lesson for you when you're switching from a larger hoop to a smaller hoop. The machine doesn't like it sometimes, so you have to pay a very careful attention to what the machine is telling you. So I'm gonna slip this on and I want you to see what's gonna happen. Touch this. And now if I would have ignored that button and then gone back, it would think I had the mega hoop on. It would have had like a little spasmatic attack. So that's why we had to pay attention to that. But now we're gonna go back to our smaller single design, which is this one. And now I'm gonna try to get it somewhere where I need it to go. So you know the drill, we hit the check mark. We touch the center needle position, and now we kind of want to get it sort of in the right vicinity. So I'm going to go down here to my needle, and then I'm going to lower my foot, and I'm going to use my multi-function knobs to move my design into the right spot. Then I want to actually use virtual positioning on my screen of my sewing machine. And I'm gonna just close out of here and I'm gonna touch with my finger right at that spot. So those crosshairs are right at the beginning stitch of the design. So now we're gonna go over here to this part and I'm gonna take my template back. So I'm gonna raise my foot and I'm just going to peel this little template back. And I'm going to kind of see that that is indeed lining up just where I want it. So in this case, I got lucky and I don't need to do any other wiggling. So I'm really happy with the way this turned out. So now I can peel my template away and get started sewing again. Okay, so I went ahead and did this little area here. And now we're gonna do pinpoint placement. Pinpoint placement is where I'm gonna start right on that little spot right there. You can't even see it from here. And line everything up perfectly, honestly, without even the need of a template. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hoop this up in my midi hoop, no template. Devil may care, everybody. Are you ready for this? So I'm just gonna kinda try to get this design in the center, best of my ability here. Slip this under. Get it hooped in there. And now we're ready. You know the drill, back to the machine. So you can see that I picked the smaller design. I'm gonna go over here and open up pinpoint placement. And then I, all I'm gonna focus on is lining this up where this needs to start. I'm not gonna really tilt it or anything like that. So all I wanna do is touch the butterfly portion of this and then use my finger. If you have your stylus, you can use your stylus as well. And now I've lined that up just there. Now I'm gonna look over here. Right on my screen here, and you can see right there is where my design ended. So I'm gonna use my multi-function knobs. Maybe lower my foot down a little bit and line that back up exactly where it left off. And so, 
you can see that that's moved in my hoop a little bit. And I am gonna do one more thing. So I'm gonna hit set and see how that turned yellow. That means that that's kind of anchored into position. Now there's only another thing I wanna check on just to make sure that nothing is gonna touch or that I indeed got it straight. I'm gonna to touch my design. Oopsie. <laughs> going to touch my design like right there and I'm just checking to make sure and I even am going to zoom in a little bit just on that that corner right there to make sure that I'm not touching anything down here that's already been stitched I'm not I don't need to anchor it I'm just checking it So I can zoom out again. And now I'm gonna to touch down here. That looks okay. That one looks okay. I think we're good. So now, just like all of our other bits, we're gonna go ahead and stitch it out, direct our attention down here. And now we're going to stitch. And this is pinpoint placement. So now let's take this off and there's our piece right there. I think that's the closest we've seen so far. What do you think? What do you think of this cute quilt? Now here is the um, finished result of course. I did do the binding. I even put a sleeve on the back of it and you can see, see how that catches the light there. The quilting looks fan fantastic. So this was pretty easy when all is said and done and certainly easier than trying to master hand guiding something there yourself. Um, the prep was, you know, it, anytime you do something like this, the prep part is going to take the longest, but this also could easily have been achieved if we had wanted to do a larger quilt. But just remember, you might have had to, you know, do a couple more hoopings as we go down the row. Also, the pinpoint placement for sure makes things much, much easier. However, regardless of pinpoint placement and regardless if you're using virtual positioning or whatever, I highly recommend that you mark with your blue pen your registration marks because that helped keep everything totally straight. Because as you go through this, because we're not really using stabilizer and we just used the batting to stabilize our material, it does kind of shift on you a little bit. So it's important to keep on track that way. All right, well, what did you think about that? I thought it was pretty easy. I It really makes me want to make something a little bit bigger, but I really do want to advise you to actually uh, don't tackle something any bigger than this if this is your first project because you want that confidence boost and you also want to just be able to have something that you can play with. If you have pinpoint placement, experiment with that. If you want to just try the virtual positioning, that's okay too. And, um, and then straight lines can be a little bit easier, but you might also wanna experiment with connecting something like together, like in a box or something. But I hope that you found this video valuable and uh, hope that you will watch more tutorials. Don't forget to check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment, and subscribe. And, you know, every once in a while, Camilla will make an appearance. <laughs> All right, see you next time. Bye-bye.